move on to the counter shaft. So same idea, stand it up in the vise. Um, I already went ahead and knocked the, the factory punch mark um, out of this because we don't want to damage the thread. Zip that off with an impact. Um, just shred it off by hand. A bunch more of the same here. Um, we need to pull those bearings and everything out. There's a little the thick washer here you want to keep with it so in an effort to keep it from getting mixed up or anything I, I just set the nut right back on it how it goes set it off to the side here so I know exactly the order it all came in and went on and again we just use a pair of screwdrivers here and work these bearings off of here nice and easy again we're not trying to damage anything or be too hard on them um, if you if you're easy with it you're not gonna hurt anything Okay, after a little bit of light persuasion, get those batterings, ba uh, bearings to slide up. Um, you wanna pay close attention. One of these has a groove in it. That groove always needs to be up towards the shaft like that. This is where your snap ring from that outer case rides, and it helps keep this shaft in its correct position inside the case. So that's very important. Again, I try to keep them exactly as they came off. I'll go over here to where the, the nut and the And the washer we took off previously are put them right on top that way everything stays in order we know how it goes back together so a lot of this stuff literally will just some of it will slide off by hand i'll set it down here again you can see it's just literally by hand these things slide apart um, i'll take that gear that i took off just to put it how i know they came so like that you don't want to flip these over. You always want to make sure they're exactly the way they came off so they go back, back the same way. If, if you flip them over, there's actually a different spacing um, on each side, and the transmission won't shift right. It won't go back together right. It's super important that you keep all this in order and make sure it goes back down on that shaft the way it, was, the way it came apart. So just put it there. Again, I can take the bearings and just keep stacking it. At this point, I'm just literally building it without the shaft so I can get down here to replace those synchros in that first and second gear. This one just slides off. There's no bearing. Make sure there's no shim or anything in between them. Set that one down. Now we're down to the point where we're in the assembly that moves. So I can take that other, that third gear and put it right under the fourth and fifth on the bench. Hopefully I don't shake the bench and it all goes tumbling down, but if that's going to be a problem, which I probably think it is, I'll just put it like this so I know what's what. So I know that goes on top of that. So now these don't need any kind of persuasion. They literally just slide off. There's your, your second gear and its assembly. Um, there's a bearing and a race in there that you want to be super careful of how they are and how they go because you want them to go back. And so at that point, there's no real reason to take that stuff apart unless you want to. And so to make life easy, you can put that, that gear on top of it. And again, this way you know that everything just goes on how it goes. So now we're down to the second synchro, but we're not going to mess with that just yet. We're going to pull the, the slider off, set it to the side. That way we can get this locking hub off and get down to that first second uh, synchro assembly and get it... Um, where we need it or get it get the worn part out of it and get it ready to start going back together so we'll set that up and I'll be right back okay turn this down a little bit you can see a little better all right so this one lucky for me just come right off didn't need any real persuasion literally just came off with my fingers again I'm gonna leave this bearing and this shim here because there's no reason to mess with it. We don't want to mix it up. We're not going to mess with any of it. Um, we'll just slide this assembly off. Set it on the bench in the order it goes. I'll actually move it over here so we can put the synchro in for you guys. Let me set the camera up. All right, guys, so here it is on the bench. Um, you can just take the hub off, the splined hub. That's what splines on the shaft. We know it goes down like that, so I don't even try to mix it up when I'm doing that. And so now we're down to the first gear synchro assembly um, on this B16 tranny. Again, we just take it off. Um, we know we're replacing this. We go to the box of new parts, match it up with a new one. 
Um, and then we'll be right back. All right, so there's your new one. Take that little spring, that new spring that was on it, put it back down on it, bottom it out like it's supposed to be. Again, give it a little look. Seems like nothing too crazy. Put that on. You can literally take this hub, line it up just like that. All right, so a little quick note. So if you put the hub on there like I did just previously, it doesn't seem like it's lining up, right? There's big space in here. You gotta keep turning it because it actually locks into that gear in another spot. So there's something actually below that you need to catch. So just a note um, that it sits down on there nice and tight. So let's move on to second gear. Okay, so I went ahead and put the second gear assembly back on it just so you guys can kind of see how it comes apart. So again, there's the second gear. I've got my finger inside holding the bearing in place. Fit it face down because we know it goes that way. So here's the really cool thing about B-series trannies. Um, is second gear actually is a double synchro. And so there's actually three parts to it. So you've got an inner. That's its own... You know, so it gives you double the surface area for going into second. And believe it or not, you guys still find ways to destroy second gear in these cars. Um, Honda went out of their way to try to, you know, help that not happen. And so when you order the new Synchro Tech stuff, it actually comes with all three pieces. Um, so let me grab that real quick and show you how it goes together. All right, guys. So now we're back to replacing that second gear Synchro. Here's the old assembly um, that we're completely replacing. So these are, like I said before, are really unique because it actually is a double setup. So there's your synchro um, that goes down against the gear here. And if you notice, there's a little ears here that drop on. And so as well as there's a center ring that adds that much more surface area to set it on there. That goes in there and it has little ears that it goes and, lo and locks into but actually further up so the inside has these little cutouts that have to align within it if you don't when you put this all together that gear won't spin and you'll be taken all the way back apart so you can kind of see there's a little lip um, this is the old assembly um, where I've already put together the new one here um, just to show you a little um, you know how it is but uh, you want to be really, really careful and meticulous as you put these together because any of these, because it'd be even beyond, you see these little three dogs, these little ears standing up, they actually, see those four, those three holes? Those have to align with that. So at this point, I mean, a lot of these things, as you're putting this all back together in the shaft, all of that has to align. If for some reason this isn't aligned with those holes, and again, you press it all together, it's stuck in second gear and there's anything you can do about it. So... You know, you want to be really meticulous when you go to put these back together. And one of the biggest things I tell people is when you get all ready to be back together, before you start zipping that nut on that counter shaft, make sure that, you, that the, the slider is in the neutral position and make sure everything spins. If something's not spinning and this isn't locked into the teeth, something's wrong. You need to take it back apart and figure out why. Because if you put it all the way back in the car and put it all the way back together, you're going to be stuck in that gear and you're going to be cussing. So just something to, to think about. Let me put this in this is just already assembled um, just like the other one this I can just take out set it to the side again so we don't mix it up it keeps wanting to go back into first gear which doesn't really hurt anything at this point but I just kind of like it up again we find those dogs on that new one and align them correctly so that they, they drop all the way in again same here we've got these dogs sticking up we go to that second gear assembly obviously don't let the bearing fall out of it get it to where you spin it and you hear it drop in and so at that point this assembly is ready to go back and start putting that counter shaft assembly back together so we'll set up and let you see that all right so here's the reassembly of the one two shift on the counter shaft and so we showed you in the previous clip on how to put the new synchros in um, things to watch out for that kind of thing so again we didn't take the bearing the two-piece bearing off or the shims we leave those alone we're not replacing any gears so none of that gets out of whack um, just kind of a, a you know an overview of how it goes back together 
and I try not to get too greedy um, when I'm putting together. I don't try to put the whole assembly on. I'll put the the, the first gear and the slider um, on as one. But again, I don't get too crazy. I kind of put my fingers on the bearing so it doesn't get messed up or any problems. And then try to hold it, make sure that everything goes down tight. So I know that it's all down tight because the, the shim in the bottom is a little bit tough to turn with my fingertips. So I know that we're good there. Um, I always like to try to like leave them in, in neutral just so I know I can kind of come back again. We always want to make sure that, that when it, everything's docked in, if for some reason this gear wouldn't spin fairly easily with my fingers, something's probably wrong. The synchro's not lined up. Um, so you want to make sure as you go, you kind of make sure that you can still get that thing in there, make sure that it's in the, in the neutral position. Um, because this three-piece synchro is kind of a, a challenge to line up. I usually will put it in after, make sure that it drops down into its little teeth that we discussed in the previous video, um, and then I'll move on to the, the actual second gear. Um, what we do here is, is I, as always, I'm, I've, I've got my fingers holding that race in and the bearing because I don't want to chase it, I don't want to have any problems with it, um, I don't want it to cause any issues. And so again, I'll start it here, keeping my fingers to guide the bearing on as it needs to so it doesn't fall through or have some kind of issue and again so we know here we can kind of see those little dog teeth sticking up that we need to rotate this gear until it drops down so once it's dropped down everything's flush everything's looking good there um, we're pretty happy nothing's staying locked in it, it locks into first gear the little spinning locks into second goes back into neutral everything still spins we're pretty happy and so at that point we can put in the, the counter shaft um, third gear, which just literally just as long as you make sure you didn't flip it over, it slides down, bottoms out. Pretty no fuss, no muss. Um, same thing with the fourth gear. Again, all it does is sit down on a spline. This one was a little tighter to fit, so usually we'll kind of spin them around a little bit, try to find a spot where they go easy. I don't like to beat on with a mallet if I don't have to. Um, sometimes you do. It's not super hard, but again, you can kind of hear me rocking it on there. And then it hits a spot. There you go. I put it in my hand. Didn't have to do anything crazy with it. And so um, we'll take a minute here and set up um, to do the fifth gear as well as the, the bearings, the, the spacer, and the nut. Um, and then we'll come back All right guys, so maybe I skipped ahead just one gear uh, We slipped the new fifth gear on put the bearings on torque this to the factory spec uh, Stake the nut so it can't back off so you might be able to notice in the video This gear is actually quite a bit smaller and so this is going to give us a much better fifth gear ratio So this is the fifth gear out of an LS trans everything else first through fourth is just B16 this is B18 LS trans to give her a little bit better cruising speed down the freeway. So we're gonna move on, put the main shaft in here and assemble that for you right quick. All right, so this is the LS uh, fifth gear assembly. We pulled the reverse off because we're not gonna mess with that or play with any of that. We're down to the slider assembly. You just pull that off, set it to the side, make sure you don't flip it over. This is our old worn out synchro fifth gear ring. Just take that, put it to the side. This is our brand new Synchrotech brass ring. Put it down on it, get to line up. When you put your slider back on, you again, make sure you don't flip it over, but the trick here is, is you gotta line it with the, the teeth on the Synchro to get it to sit flat. So there it dropped down, tilted up so you can see everything is in pretty good alignment. Um, it's nice and tight again. Um, we're really not messing with reverse at all because we weren't having any issues here. So I literally just take it line up its little dog teeth in the in the hub assembly get it to drop down and you have to line this little ring there's teeth on top that have to line up like that bearing goes like that and that assembly literally is ready to put back on your main shaft and so we'll set it up and start assembling the main shaft here for you all right guys so we've made all of our little assemblies replaced all of our synchro rings and other little little springs that go with them 
Um, so now we're going to put together the main shaft just so just like we did the counter shaft. So again, I like to put them together as kind of little assemblies. Um, but again, you don't want to get too greedy and have things pop apart and have those little gear dog teeth not line up as you're doing it. So you want to be really careful if you're going to try to do it like I do it. Um, but what I do is try to put my finger all the way down on the bottom because as you can see, there's a roller bearing in there. And so what you want to do is keep that in line. You don't want any of these things popping apart or having an issue. And so you kind of just keep your finger underneath it and walk it on down. And the nice thing is with these things is for the most part, they, they will slide back on. But see how that fell apart? We kind of don't want to do that. We want to keep that assembly. Sometimes there's no way around it and you have to spend a little time, which is what this one is acting like. Um, even though it slid right off the first time, so I might have to get a little mallet and tap it down on there. But um, usually, if your transmission wasn't totally, um, you know, pretty well used before you decided to rebuild it, um, a lot of times they'll they'll just slide back on. So let me take a second, and we'll come right back. All right, with a couple of little light taps and persuasion to get that hub to slide back down on there, I had to take the gear off. But again, like with just showed you on the counter shaft, you want to make sure that once it's bottomed out like it's supposed to, you don't have any up and down play, um, and that your gear here spins freely when this is unlocked. So if it doesn't, again, you need to press that back off or tap it back off and, and get that synchro ring to line up with the little dogs in the, in the, the hub. And so at this point, I can just take my second gear assembly um, bearing that I had to take off and just line it up again we want to actually drop right in you need those little dog teeth to drop back in so we're pretty good shape um, at this point we can move on to third gear assembly um, maybe we get lucky and it goes all on at once let me wipe it down a bit because everything's in perfect alignment so Take that, and it goes down and aligns right with that other bearing that's already in that gear. And I think the only thing that's going to have to be tapped on at this point is the is the bearing. So we'll... all right, so we got the hub set down like it's supposed to. Gear still moves, little synchro moves back and forth like it's supposed to. We can move on to. Our last little bit here, hopefully it goes on as an assembly, otherwise I'll take it back apart. Get the bearing and... Slide. Little inner bearing race to slide back down. Again, we want to align our little dog teeth. On our synchro ring, we find a their happy spot. There we go. Right on there. Everything's spinning free. Everything looks good. All right. Once everything's seated down, now again you want to make sure all these gears spin nice and free before you tap that bearing on. Um, make sure that this little tab is pointing down pointing towards the bell housing once you put it in the transmission um, because if you don't you won't be able to get the case on if you flip this thing over as well um, pay attention there's these two little dog ears here that have to line up with a, a, a race that's in there as well so you want to make sure those dog ears um, line up as well and so at that point we're ready to take our bearing tap it into place lightly with a socket and a small hammer um, again, not trying to damage anything. Pretty light fit, you can see, pretty small hammer. There it goes. Yep, bottom is out. Good shape. Everything still spins free. Nothing's having problems. So, at this point, I'm pretty happy with this shaft and it's ready to go back in the transmission. So, we'll get that set up and show you that. All right, so this point we're going to put the new input seal in new input bearing again we want to make sure that this is facing up towards us um, otherwise it won't seal kind of started in the case 
Usually you can almost put them in by hand. This one's literally going pretty much by hand, but find you an appropriate size socket and hammer. Just tap her in. Kind of work your way around. You want to pinch that seal. This would be the worst seal to have to redo because the transmission's got to come all the way apart. Nice and flush all the way around. It'll stop. You can't put it in too far. So don't worry about doing that. Just kind of get it to all the edges are nice and flush. All right. Once you're happy with it. Nice and flush in there. Put your new bearing in. Nothing special. There's no direction. It just goes in. Again, you just put it here. You can take it nice and easy. And it's just a little easy tap fit. We're not hitting it hard. We're using a little tiny hammer. Again, we're not hitting on that center part or anywhere else. We're on that outer race. So you kind of tap it in. It'll definitely get to the spot where it'll it'll just make. It'll be loud like that where it doesn't, it's not moving anymore. Okay, and that's bottomed out. That literally is it. That's your input bearing seal and seal uh, installation. And again, if you're going to do one of these trannies, it's dumb not to do that every time. Um, it's pretty rare that any of the other bearings go out. I think I've ever seen one set of diff bearings go bad um, in my own personal car, but it had close to 300,000 on it. So usually, um, that's not the case, but usually I just go around spin the bearings. If you feel any roughness, they're grinding, they're loose, go ahead and replace them because you don't want to have to do it again. So let me set this up and we'll put the main and counter shaft in it. All right, so the diff's back in, everything's ready. Um, you set the shift forks up right on the shafts. You put the shafts pretty close to the way they go together. Um, one thing to make your life easy, this little shim pack we pulled off or, or pulled off earlier. It's easier just to put it right back on. Um, otherwise, it'll fall off and you'll have to regroup. So I'm going to try to come around the side and let you guys see me put this in. Hopefully it goes on the first attempt. All right. So if everything goes right, start the input. Work your way down. And kind of lines as you go. Just a note, you can't put these shafts in without the shift forks being in it. So if you decide you're going to make it easy on yourself, don't bother. All right. Once you that, you put the main shaft to drop down. You kind of work it around. Get everything to kind of not fight you. Set down in it. I work at it a little bit because they don't always drop right in. Fight you a little. There it went. There it goes. Drop right in. All right. So everything is in alignment. Everything's good. Can't really shift it at this point, but everything is happy. I always try to, when I get ready to put the case on, I try to make sure everything's in neutral, just in case I need to spin it. Nothing's in a bind. You see everything's working now. So we'll prep the top case. Actually, we'll put the shift mechanisms on it in the reverse gear so you guys can see that, how they go. And then we'll prep the case and put some sealing on it, bolt this thing back together and show you what it's like done. Okay, so there's the shift mechanism we took off earlier. The big thing is you just kind of want to line it, line this all up with those right in those slots, put the bolts in, don't cross straight anything. Remember, the gold bolt is short, 
um, goes up here in its own special spot. Um, you don't want to mix them up. So you start that, you have to take the bolts out because you got to kind of work that mechanism in there, get everything to line up. You might have to jiggle the shift forks a bit to get it all to be happy. It takes a, a bit. All right, now that we got the shift mechanism installed, um, we'll spin it around, get the reverse idler and its mechanism put in. Real easy. Make sure when you do this that that pin is always down. There's a spot for it, and you make sure that the fat part of the gear is always down. So usually you can just slide it in, work that pin in just like that. Grab our reverse mechanism, put it down in there, make sure that it goes around. And you gotta make sure the little pin the other end lines up. So we gotta go around the gear, hold it, like that. You can put your two bolts in, line up super easy. Set those in. Again, make sure that pin lines up. Make sure the gear is in between there like that. And then at this point, we're ready to put some sealing on it and put the case on it. We're about almost done. We'll come back. All right, so put the Honda Bond on it. Take, take the case, get it ready. So one little note, last note before we put this thing together. That little tab we were talking about that keeps that, that uh, race from spinning. You kind of want to point it up towards this little grill section. Starters here, this is the top of bell housing. That gives you kind of the area in here. Hopefully you can see it. That's where you need to line it up. And let's see if we can get this thing to go down and easy. Shift forks a little bit. Shift. Yeah, that one. There we go. All right. So after a little working it down, I got to sit back down on there. Shifted it through the gears. Um, I think we're in pretty good shape this point I'm gonna spin it around show you how to put the detent balls in it real quick um, just so you have an idea there again it doesn't matter they're both the same put the ball in spring in spread it up um, same with the lower one nothing special here that get them started Take your 12 millimeter, get them both tight, and then we'll stand it up for you real quick. All right. One more bolt to tighten that 14 for that, that uh, reverse shaft. Get that. And we'll run through the gears real quick. So, first gear, we go back, I believe. First, forward. Second. Middle, third, fourth, and 
bit. And the worse you get to kind of spin it. And there's reverse. All right, well, there you go. There's a B16 rebuild for you. Hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Hopefully I can do some more co content like this for you. This is a pretty big project. Um, thanks for watching Rock Apes How-Tos.